Hello and welcome to the channel. It is me, Chris Brooks. I have something rather explosive to show you. Um, I'm only going to show you small clips which amount to about 10 minutes long. So they have been cut. So it, although they look professionally edited as one whole clip, it is actually segments of clips. Um, it's an interview with Dr. Brian Ardis and hosted by Jason Shirker. Um, and it goes into the real reasons for what created the um, pandemic. And it also talks about the very unusual and surprising antidote for all of it. Like I say, what I'm going to play you is kind of like the first, probably in the first hour of a two and a bit hour interview. Just to give you an idea, the full link will obviously be in the video description and you can watch it in its entirety there, all completely unedited. I don't know how long this is going to stay up. I don't know whether the algorithms are going to go... <coughs> so watch it while you can and I bid you a good day. In December of 2021, I get a text from a doctor a lot of people know around the world as the budesonide guy. His name is Dr. Richard Bartlett, and he is an ER doctor out of Odessa, Texas. Mm -hmm. He sends me a text, and in that text it says, Hey, Doc, if you got bit by a rattlesnake, would you go to the hospital and get antivenom? And I look at this text, and Dr. Richard Bartlett and I have been on stages for two years now talking about COVID. So when I see this random text, I'm like, what in the world are you talking about? Of course I would go ER doctor. <laughs> of course I would go to a hospital like it by, got bit by a rattlesnake. But why are you asking me this random question? Richard Bartlett knows me enough, and you mentioned me as a researcher. If I can't see it, if I can't make sense out of it, I'm not speaking on it. So everything I speak on, including this interview, I would have never talked about the venom aspect of COVID if I couldn't show you. And we will show you that the entire narrative of COVID is a damn illusion and they have lied to all of you. Every single one of those symptoms, I can show you which venoms and from what creatures and snakes are creating your symptoms. I can show you and I can tell you. And then I can explain how to actually get rid of the symptoms with one singular antidote that they don't want you to know. And the whole world has been lying to you about this antidote for the last at least 50 years. And I couldn't believe that CNN Health published a paper. And it reads, <laughs> I can put it up on the screen, I couldn't believe it. It reads, snakes could be the source of the Wuhan coronavirus outbreak, and it's in January of 2020. And then it, the very first sentence of the article reads, Snakes, the Chinese crate and the Chinese cobra may be the original source of the newly discovered coronavirus that has triggered an outbreak of a deadly infectious respiratory illness in China this winter. And then I find this article. Look what this article published in January 2020, what they were calling COVID. Look, look what they called it. Snake pneumonia coronavirus outbreak in China traced to snakes by genetic analysis. Because I was like reading all these articles from January 2020 and every single one of them is talking about snakes being the origin of COVID. I'm like, what? Where did the bat stuff come from? At the end of January of 2020, every single one of these articles have date stamps of being fact checked. And this is when the narrative starts being turned to bats. It ain't snakes, it ain't snakes, it's bats, it ain't snakes, it's bats. These are all the animals it's most likely to be, and to the far left snakes. is the origin. Farther right you go, you get away from the origin. So the third one's a bat and the first two are snakes. And that's right, and the first snake is the crate snake, which is an Asian venomous deadly snake. The second you can see from the illustration is a cobra. So this is what they published in January 2020. Imagine my shock that we're sitting here three and a half years into this pandemic and I'm the only one, it appears, that wants to continue telling you guys, DNA experts that we trust in the judicial court system to lay down the final confirmation that this person raped, murdered your loved one because we have DNA evidence. Those people that we trust. 
Those people have been ignored, <laughs> fact check away from, those experts who are geneticists, not the chiropractor, figured this out. And that wasn't the only people that figured it out. And now it's going to talk about how we've all been lied to with regards to nicotine. So this is a proper eye-opener. Check this out. You asked prior to this question. In April of 2020, French researchers and geneticists confirm and then publish that nicotine in smokers and ivermectin is working against COVID because it binds to these receptors better than venom does. Their very last statement in their actual paper was a request to all governments around the world to invest in funding studies using nicotine patches, nicotine gum, as the antidote to COVID to end the pandemic. The very next month, that was April of 2020, the very next month in May of 2020, Anthony Fauci, Joe Biden, I'll go into the media, go do shows everywhere, in the news, everywhere, telling the world that new data has come up, that smokers are the highest at risk for getting COVID and are dying in hospitals around the world. America, there's no better time than now than to quit smoking. This is how far the lies go. Now you're asking about the nicotine uh, and, the, and the patches. Right? I just want you to know. I just what want you, you know. just said is the fact that it goes that deep. Oh, it goes way deeper than that. And we're going to get into this. Because I couldn't believe how far this goes. Immediately, people responded, including my wife, who had no taste or smell for two years after having a mild case of COVID and had for six months ringing in her ears called tinnitus that was so debilitating she couldn't watch TV, couldn't hear me talking. It was driving her nuts for six months. I was giving her every nutritional supplement, every... We even tried ivermectin. It didn't work. Nothing was working. When I asked her to do the nicotine, she said, first response was, I don't want to try any nicotine product. I don't want to be addicted to nicotine. And I was like, honey, just try the nicotine. Nothing else has worked. These scientists said it's working, right? We should try it. Two years she struggled with that stuff and wouldn't do it. But when my Watch the Water documentary dropped and I said, the antidote is nicotine, go get nicotine patches, nicotine gum, people around the world did it. My wife didn't want to do it. She was worried about the addictive part. It wasn't until a medical doctor contacted a media outlet and said, get my story to Dr. Artist, please. A medical doctor had gone deaf in Australia in her right ear after having a mild case of COVID. She had been confirmed by other medical professionals that she had 100% hearing loss and would be deaf for life as a side effect to COVID. She went and bought nicotine gum, chewed it for 30 minutes, and something, she felt like air in her ear. Oh, my God. And then at, quick. at 45 minutes of one two milligram nicotine tablet gum, at 45 minutes, 100% of her hearing was restored. Wow. Okay. So when my wife hears this being reported to me in an interview in my house that I'm just participating in via the computer and the internet, she leaves without telling me. Goes to Costco and buys this case of Nicorette gum, but doesn't tell me, and then starts chewing it four times a day for 10 minutes and spitting it out. And on day three, all of her symptoms disappeared. After two years of not having After two years. Okay, when I say this is really important, my wife was hesitant to try this because of the worry of addiction, of nicotine. You, do you want to know how far the deception goes and how far the lies go? That was going to be my question about the addictive factor. Everyone at home, look up on the internet right now, look up Harvard 2015 study, nicotine is not addictive. So they do an animal study with nicotine. They want to know just how potent of an addictive substance is nicotine in 2015. And they can't get any of the animals to be addicted to strict nicotine. And then Harvard submits FOIA requests of the federal government to find out how, how did the tobacco giants make their products addictive if nicotine isn't the addictive substance? Because we've all been lied to. Harvard figured it out in 2015. They get the documents from the 1970s and 80s. The, the tobacco giants at that point started to make what they called light cigarettes. And they couldn't get anybody to rebuy them because they weren't addicted to them. They weren't addictive enough. So but they, they had nicotine in them. Yeah, they had nicotine in them. So what was the difference between those and other ones? Yeah, so they just reduced the amount of tobacco product in these cigarettes, however they did it. Maybe they made them smaller to make them lighter. Who knows? I didn't even get that far. I didn't even care because what was revealed was the magic. They hired chemists to come in and actually tell them, how do we make our tobacco products addictive? Because people aren't buying it. This is in the 70s. And chemists go, well, it'll be easy. 
if you just add a chemical called pyrazines to the nicotine and to the tobacco plant, everybody will be addicted to it. How do you spell that? P-Y-R-A-Z-I-N-E-S. They add two products to enhance flavor profiles and aromas, and they are super addictive. In fact, Harvard published that the pyrazines are what create the dependency for all tobacco products, including nicotine. Let me just recap for a second. Nicotine isn't addictive. Right. Harvard proved it in 2015. Right. In the 70s, the industry basically hired chemists to figure out how to make it addictive to sell more. Yes. That's when they introduced pyrazines into the equation. Yes. And that's what makes cigarettes addictive today. Yes. And then they lied to all of you and said tobacco products cause cancer. Oh my God, we've heard that too. Oh my no, God. Wait, 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 wait. It's crazy. One, one question. There are those cautions on, on you know, cigarette boxes today. I think it's by law. It is. Where it says caution. Nicotine is an addi addictive substance. Stay away from it, blah, 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 blah. If Harvard proved what they proved in 2015, how is that on the box? That's true, right? I guess you're just free to label whatever you want, I guess, and lie to everybody in the whole world. I guess people would just get away with that crap. I have no idea how they do this. All right, so they told you also that tobacco and nic nicotine are also carcinogens that cause cancer, lung cancer. Did you know that right now on the FDA's website, they list that they have approved 600 chemicals to be added to tobacco cigarettes and tobacco snuff that are synthetically man-manufactured chemicals. 600. But they're going to tell you tobacco and nicotine in tobacco are the carcinogen. Did you know that the paper of cigarettes in the 70s, 80s, actually they laced it with arsenic? Do you know that arsenic is a cancer-causing chemical? And do you know they started adding sugar into the tobacco product inside the cigarettes? And when you burn sugar and that sugar gets inside of your lungs where arsenic is, do you know that sugar is an immune suppressant and allows cancer to thrive? This is gonna get way worse than you think about just venom because you're gonna realize just how far they will go to lie to all of us to make a sick, diseased, it's awful, in the perspective of tobacco and nicotine.